Well guys, welcome back to another walkthrough episode. I keep promising these on every episode, but this one I was not going to miss because it's far too unique. I'm here with Scotty from Overland in Oz, and we're on a trip, dude. How are you? Mm, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> it's hard to be yeah, shit on a morning. Very relaxed, yeah. very relaxed. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to show you guys this car, and I wanted Scotty to sort of tell the, uh, you know, the story behind it. So, tell us what it is. Yeah, and I, I love hearing the story behind this one. Yeah, so it's a uh, 1983 60 Series Land Cruiser uh, diesel 4 litre um, that my wife Annalise, her grandparents owned, and has been in the family since 1991. Far. Yeah, so about 33 years. 33 now. Yeah, years. It's been in the family, so picked it up from her grandparents for two and a half grand. <laughs> After yeah, so Annalise told me that uh, her granddad had a, an old bucket of shit in their backyard yeah. that wasn't being driven. And then uh, we stumbled across it one day when I paid my first visit to their grandparents' place. Yeah. And said, would you be willing to sell it? And they said, two and a half grand, you can take it. And I thought, it's been ours ever since, so. How many Ks did it have on? Uh, uh, it's had 268,000 when we got it. And I noticed this morning when I was filming, yeah. how much is it? Three, 350 something, I think. So you've, you've given it a good nudge. Yeah. And let's let's keep in mind also that this isn't a daily, is it? No, no, Christ. So, so all. they're all camping, yeah, country, yeah. travelling Ks, probably, aren't they? Yeah, probably close enough to 90 to 100,000 Ks. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, tell us some of the places that you've taken it to, yeah. man, because I've followed his journey on Instagram. I'll put his handle up here. It's absolutely awesome. Um, I've seen him take that transition from him and his uh, him and his wife or fiance maybe at that mm. time traveling all the way through and then now he's transitioned into you know dad life yeah. and then and you're making all these changes yeah. and then you've got to you to start thinking Always about making changes. no I, I yeah. don't know and that's that's one thing I love about your Instagram is that yeah. you you tinker heaps as yeah. well and I love that you yeah. you document that but yeah. when I was talking about the transition thing it's like well he's literally just bought a camper trailer. Mm. This freaking weekend, dude. Yeah, yeah, yes. Congratulations on that. But yeah. amazing how we're always changing our setup and how dramatically it yeah. changes yeah. when you have kids. I think that's part of the fun. That's what oh. I enjoy most about it. Yeah, all the yeah, time. Exactly. yeah, you get a lot of satisfaction out of doing that stuff and, yeah. then, and then putting your ideas out to use. You know? Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, rattle off some of the places that yeah, you've traveled so, in this freaking beauty. Yeah, so we, like, we've done a lot of WA. Yeah. Um, not, we've, we've done like, all the coast up, you know, up to Broome, Cape Levique, that kind of stuff. Um, we're doing the Gibb for the first time this year, but we've taken it, um, you know, along the bottom end to Esperance across to Adelaide. Oh, we've done dude. done all the drive over to Adelaide yeah. and that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah I remember we did that. Uh, that uh, that's actually where I proposed to Annalise on the drive oh. to Adelaide. Smack bang in the middle of Nullarbor in 43 yeah. degrees, <laughs> sweating in a car like Is there this. A with no aircon. Of that? Uh, there's no it's photo of the proposal sign? itself, oh, but um, yeah, there's there's a few photos on the Instagram of the, yeah, the oh, trip and stuff, and we, yeah. were, we were sweltering. It was a it was a memorable trip. For, uh, won't be yeah, forgetting lot of, that lot of any time, No, it was it was good. Obviously, the proposal came with that trip too. But yeah, yeah, we um, we've done Dirk Hardog as well, which is one of the real the real big ones that we did. So yeah. we did ten ten days out of this car off grid. Uh, yeah. yeah, with no you know no fuel and all that kind of stuff, yeah. which was um, yeah, it was a really real bucket list kind of trip. That was yeah. for my thirtieth, so oh. did Dirk Harbour for my thirtieth and we'll yeah. do the give for Anna's thirtieth. So, Bloody yeah. hell. How's that? That's not bad. Yeah, at it's all. not bad. But guys, I actually want to um, I want to get Scotty on the podcast on Every Man Chats as well, and we can sort of dive more into that stuff and fatherhood and all that. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, uh, sit down, have a couple of beers, mm. a nice chat. So keep an eye out for that. Let's get into this rundown. There's a lot to run through. I hope you enjoy because I love looking through this thing. You've got to appreciate, especially so sorry to keep babbling but I like to do a camp setup more rather than just a car run through I like to do a camp setup but the inside of this is just too good to miss it's too good to miss and it's too classic so let's get into yeah, it my mate. all right guys so don't know how to structure this as there's so much to see in this video but I thought we'd start off with drawers and the fridge and then we'll, we'll work on side storage as well because there's a couple of beauty little ideas in this and a lot of 
things that Scotty's done that are home, like home jobs, you yeah. know what I mean? And it, it, it's come up bloody beautiful. So yeah. I'm sure there'll be a few ideas to steal for you 60 owners or any any car owner, any full drive owner. So I reckon we start off, brother, with the drawers as well, because yeah. I got I got inspired by you to stack my drawers. Yeah, I, so, that's right, I remember yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess I just started off with a, what most people would consider a reasonably kind of standard setup in terms yeah. of a set of drawers and a fridge on top. Obviously yeah. just ran with the Titan drawers because they were, you know, they could bang for the buck really, considering oh. I put them underwater twice, they're still going. So, <laughs> go, um, yeah. But yeah, I think I just found over time, I suppose once we did the suspension stuff on the car, the fridge got higher, you know, yeah. it's a bit more of a pain to get into. Yeah. And I just thought, well, if we can drop it down, I had a crack at basically just ripping all the rivets out of them and separating them and stacking them yeah. on top. And I found this this setup now to be far more functional. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it man. kind of, yeah, I just kind of find that it flows a lot better now. And obviously uh -huh. having your fridge lowered, you know, there's a little um, slide out table there. But yeah, obviously, got the, yeah, so you got the two drawers there. Um, obviously, just a whole load of like uh, storage pods and stuff in here. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll throw B roll of that in the footage of that. The, the, the old nookie delight. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we've <laughs> Did you got, finish that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand oh, what you mean now. Oh, eh? yeah. <laughs> so got, yeah, got a bit of pork grain, but nice. um, yeah. So and we've got a um, like an onboard water tank here, which we put in for the. Uh, we actually put this in for the Dirk Hardog uh, trip. So there's 72 liters of water there. That's um, got a water pump on it and just a gravity fed line yeah. as well. Um, so is that like shaped around the wheel arch yeah, or like a, yeah. a box? Yeah, it is. So it's shaped around the wheel arch. So that I used to have one of the other, um, the draw wings here. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of was a spot for a deck chair or something like yeah, that. But obviously yeah. took, I've taken that out because we needed to find a space to get some water in for, you know, yeah. for really long trips. Um, kind of a bit hard with the fuel tank underneath and stuff to get a, a really decent size. Yeah, maybe you're saying that tank. to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we decided to like, put it on board. It obviously adds a bit more weight in the back. Um, yeah. Which hasn't really been a factor of consideration no, the no, way to be honest exactly in this. So yeah. um, kind of just more so about how we can be comfortable off grid for yeah. long periods. But yeah, so the water tank kind of it, it shapes up over the back of the wheel arch yep. and in that kind of recess at the back is where the um, water pump is mounted. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of hidden and tucked away there. And then yeah, there's obviously just a little dial indicator uh, gauge indicator on the front for your water level. And yep. we've got a um, flow meter at the back, which yeah. we'll look out when we get around the corner. Exactly, perfect. Yeah. So um, do you want to give a shout out yeah, to the company? Because yeah, that's so it's John, beautiful work. Yeah, so it's John from House of Fab. I'm, I think he might have changed his business name though. Now. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Um, and I can't, I don't know if it was Graver Customs or something like okay, that. Okay, yeah. yeah he does I'll find out like and I'll put it on the screen. Yeah, Scotty yeah, will tell me. He's a very, very handy fab fabricator. So I had a chat to him and um, yeah, put some kind of ideas together. You know, weighed up a few different options. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, the work he's done has been really good. And obviously it's got the proper hiding So now. can I ask you, is that custom made for this car? Uh, yeah, yeah, it so is. So was that the first one he's done for this? Yeah. 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 Oh, beautiful. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. it was, you know, it, it was, wasn't something he's done before. It was kind of, you know, by request kind of work. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. then, you know, initially I went to him about chatting about putting one in underneath the car. Yeah. And kind of when we, you know, weighed up, you know, the options of what was available under there, start, the cost starts getting really high when you have to start making really weird Modifications shapes. Modifications and brackets gaps. and bullshit. Yeah. yeah so, gotcha. you know, I mean, this is a reasonably basic shape. Yep. Um, and it, you know, it fits the spot really well. Oh, it much, does, man. Yeah, so it it looks beautiful too. Yeah, so I think it's yeah, 72 litres. 72, sure. yeah. that's a decent amount. See, yeah. I go with, I've got uh, 35 litres now yeah. in, in mine, yeah. and I find that's plenty. Yeah. That's like a double that, which yeah. allows, you know, no, uh, you know, no, no need to worry about mm. amounts that you're using for showers and shit like that. Yeah. We'll show you the pump and everything around that side when we do show you, and, um, how clever it is how clever this little setup is freaking magic so and fridge yeah yeah so that's um it's the 75 litre um dometic uh or waco dual, dual zone oh the dual zone the dual yeah, zone, yeah. so obviously run the run the fridge and well, fridge most of the time to be honest it's normally a food ah, and a, interesting yeah, yeah the freezer normally for long trips like dirk hard and stuff we run yeah. the freezer for still um, got the um uh the dairy area in it uh, you know, yeah, the little pocket of dairy area where you can put like butter and cheese and uh, all that. No. Oh, no, interesting. So no. just two pods now. Yeah, so it's baskets. Just, it's just yeah, baskets. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. obviously there's there's one that's got the um the recess with the compressor that sits behind. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and two baskets on that side, and then in this side there's just one big basket with yeah. a you know with a divider in it. So. And big enough for a family, mate. It is enough big enough. To, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's big enough. I mean, I'd normally fill one side with a full carton. Yeah, you just, gotcha. You know, rather than replace like for like. Um. But when we go away on long trips, I'll just run a six pack in there or something like that. And yeah, that's you need it. a lot more when you've got kids and stuff like exactly that. Exactly. So drinks for Anna, that kind of stuff too. Yeah. But obviously, 
well and truly big enough on it for a trip like this. Yeah, you know, it's just myself. But, but a family, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good size, and I think you'd, well, you'd struggle to get anything bigger. Yep. In here, really. I, I, know, think once, so. I, I think it's snug. It's snug. Yeah. yeah. Once the ninety-five is, I think the ninety-five might be the next size up. Or yeah, maybe I think 80, you're right. Or maybe I've, the ninety-five. Yeah. I don't know, but it doesn't. It wouldn't fit this space like this. No. Nah, you know, it's perfectly. Obviously, you get that little bit, bit of extra width and stuff there, and length on the ninety-five. So. Yeah. Yeah, I found the 75 has been really good, and I picked this up off Marketplace, like dirt cheap too. Way to go, Both freaking Marketplace. didn't fit in his car what and he doing? put it in the shed. Yeah, what, what is he doing, man? Um, yeah, it's a market, Marketplace steal, yeah. brand, brand new, just out of warranty, and I picked it up for like 700 bucks, and I was like... 700? Yeah, nice, dude, yeah. okay, cool. So it was a, yeah, it was a good deal in the end, though. Me. So I'm looking behind your shoulder, dude. I, I, I love people who have these solar screens. I want to ask you, how have you found them? I rate them, yep. but I find myself window licking all the yeah, time. Yeah, dude. I'm no, always that's licking it. the yep. tabs and sticking them back on. Like, I don't know, this corner's come away way too many times. Same here, dude. And you're yeah. always just going like that. Yeah. I reckon that that's not even... I reckon they're a beautiful product because yeah. they drop down the tent. Yeah, tab. they do big time. I mean, yeah. yeah, we bought them. I've had them on this car for oh, years, probably yep. four or five years maybe. Yeah. And then, you know, despite the fact that they're always popping off, as soon as we bought the Prado, we chucked that on there straight away. Well, there you go. You know, 100%. So I, 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 great what they do like yeah. they, they have massive benefit but you almost need to have like perfectly clean windows all the time no i and know then reapply them every week Ex exactly and I, I reckon i don't know if there's if there's any way that i could improve a product it'd be mm. just it'd be a perfect product if they had better suction caps on yeah. them but i know there's people out there who are like oh they've tried like you know clean the window put the alcohol yeah. on there and yeah. stuff like that it's like I don't want to be doing that. No, I want them no. to go on once, yeah. man, and that's it. You know, even if they're 3M stickers. Or, yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> the tint will come yeah. off with it, but yeah. hey, if you're going to leave them on. I, I've taken mine off yeah. because of that reason. It got too freaking yeah, annoying yeah. knocking them on and off. Mm -hmm. But um, So, guys, we're going to move around to the side now and keep on the back of this, um, uh, this back area, and then we'll work our way up to see the awning, sleeping area, solar, max tracks, and then I want to do the interior as well. What do yep, you reckon? Sounds good. So now we're around uh, on the side of the car, guys. Now straight away you would notice the uh, the gull wings. Scotty, tell us the story behind that, man. Yeah, so they're um, they're not like genuine gull wings. Um, I know there's a couple of different brands on the market now. Um, they're actually so they're a homemade job, not by myself, but by a bloke called Nathan. Who I don't know if he still has his Instagram page, but he does a lot of fabrication work too. Yeah. Um, Oz Adventures, I think it was. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's the same guy that made our gas bottle holder. That we'll, oh, I guess, on the on the yeah, later, yeah, yeah. I always yeah. ask about the gas bottle holder, but yeah, Good. so he made these for me. He started doing them for a few different cars. I know he did um the the eighty series run and some for the yeah. controls and stuff too. But I'm not sure if he's doing them anymore. But they're um they you know they're they're obviously very handy. Opens the way that opens up the way you're able to kind of you know, operate out the side of your car. Yeah. They probably, they're a lim little bit limited in terms of their height, um, which I'd find myself knocking my head on all the time, but, you know, <laughs> stuck into it. I was saying to Scotty, yes, that's actually perfect for me. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just a, how, how has it changed, dude? How has it changed, you know, having access, obviously, yeah. to, to right here? Yeah. As in the, you know, you'd have to usually worry about putting that fitting back here back, somewhere. Yeah, whereas here, hose, yeah. separated, next to the um, the shower en suite. Yeah. How have you found the difference, man? Is this the first car you've had a gull wing on? Yeah, yeah, it oh, is. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've never even had a four-wheel drive before this one. So oh, obviously, really? yeah. So it, yeah, I mean, the setups change all the time with the with the shower on suite there, and obviously, you know, we've got the water, yeah. the water fitting right here, and just on a switch, it's just you know cold water from the tank. Yeah, that's it's not right. heated water, but um, yeah, obviously, you just be able to plug in and use the shower and stuff like just small things like that. You know, it on the is, other side. Man the gull wing open you can access the um the fridge yep. and all your electrical stuff on the other side yeah yeah i did notice um, you doing that last night and i get envious in. man it's so nice yeah, it's kind so of nice. reaching and grab a beer without opening all the back yeah, up and that exactly. kind of stuff um but yeah it's you know it's, it's very handy in that regard yeah um, i've got the so i've got the compressor and stuff over here yeah. too um actually just before that the um we've got one of the topogy uh, oh yeah we're gonna here. mention that yeah yeah so we've got one of the, the water flow meter here like a digital one it's hooked up basically just hooks up in line with the pump and the outlet yep. there and it just detects how much water flow comes through it yeah so gotcha. when you fill the tank up you zero it yep. or you know set it to 72 liters and then obviously the minute it starts to detect water flow it starts counting down as a liter passes through it yeah it's clever um, how it does yeah. that because scotty was pressing it turned the pump on mm. yesterday and then straight away the digital display comes yeah. on i know cam uses one as well man. yeah like really great yeah so. i think that they're pretty handy like i know a lot of caravans and stuff run them too yeah. but you know they're, they're exactly the same kind of yeah. in the car you know yeah. they work no different sometimes the um the clear rubber 
sight gauge on the front of the tank to get a bit dirty. It's hard to oh, tell right. where the water level is. You yeah, know? gotcha. So obviously you good gotta, backup. Yeah, good Ooh, backup. That's yeah. a good backup. <laughs> yeah, I suppose the only thing is though, um, we use the like I was saying here before. You know, I use the gravity fed water more often than the pump. Yeah, gotcha. And with that, the flow gauge. I don't think the flow gauge. The flow gauge doesn't go through the pump. Oh, oh sorry, right. it does go through the pump, but um, it doesn't go through the gravity fed line. Yeah. So when you're using gravity water all the time, it doesn't detect it on the pump. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah gotcha. so it's kind of one of those things, you know, like it's, you know, if you're using pump water all the time, then that's perfect if you're yeah. using a whole tank of it. But when you're using gravity fed, you know, for your cart, wash your hands and stuff, yeah, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't detract off of that. That's you know a, I'm I mean. glad you brought that up. Yeah. yeah, 100%. That's a good point to yeah. bring up. There's something for you guys to maybe notice as well. Yeah, I, I wouldn't consider. have known that, so that's yeah. good to know. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, use, I use that water more so than um, pressurised water. Ah, oh, shit. Know. Okay, yeah. So, gotcha. Yeah, it's just, you know, something to note of anyway. But yeah, um, yeah so I've got, obviously got the compressor and stuff here. Um, I decided a couple of years ago to run a... Um, a fixed dividing wall across the back of the car here yeah. which is just a good way to store stuff as oh well. dude i'll show you the inside as well you got yeah. stuff on the other yeah, side we as well it's we clever, man. normally just stuck with storage pods and stuff yep. been, you know for long trips with the kids we might send an ipad on or something yeah, like that so that's they can it. kind of watch it. it's like a you know, little tv or something like that yep. um but more so storage pods on the other side but through here it's kind of got all of our um electrical accessories you know a couple of storage pods the um the compressor obviously yep. as well um, how, do you, how do you rate that man i, I rate it it's, yep. it's quick yeah oh is it really yeah gotcha. it's very quick um yeah i do rate it the arb um twin yeah so um, yeah it's been really good so just had to run a fair bit of like some pretty heavy duty leads down the back here to run the compressor and all that kind of stuff got yeah, inverted too yep. so beautiful need to run some decent leads down here for that um yeah i can see <laughs> yeah but it's been really it's been, it's been really good um yeah, and it's handy as well just to be able to pop this and just plug the hose straight in. Yeah, so this, this bag here just keeps all the keeps the recovery gear and the, yep. the um the winch controller and the um yeah the compressor you know airlines and stuff like that. So it's just yep. pop that plug in, you know, bang bang on the tires and seems like it's been really well thought through. I mean the grab me gear stuff you yeah. you've been a freaking no, um, I've been, yeah. like a, a what do you call like a supporter of them for yeah. years, man. Yeah, like, like absolute years and and you love their gear. Yeah. I reckon this, I don't know. And of every run through I do, if there's any suggestions you might have yeah. for Scotty More or anyone, yeah, yeah, dude, that's absolutely. what that's what I, I find I get the best advice from them. Mm. But how cleverly thought out is this? You know, there's a, a spot for everything. There's no wasted space. That inverter, what do you use that for? Charging, Not share? much, really, to be honest with you. Um, we, we use it from time to time to, like, charge a laptop. Yeah, long trip. That's probably the yeah. only reason why we put it in there. But um, it's so good to have that, yeah, you know? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd, to be honest with you, I'd probably just put another storage pod there if I didn't have the inverter, yeah, which would just be yeah. something else to, you know, throw stuff in that might be a little hard to reach, so... Yeah. I noticed off. you've got a spare um, storage pod there. Yeah. Is that literally just for something, you know what I mean? You haven't allocated that yet, or...? Um, no, so I actually used to keep all the compressor hose and stuff there and didn't run this pod here. Yep. Um, but when we built the tank and it kind of brought it up a bit, it kind of yeah. allowed the pod to sit yeah. there. Yeah, so well. that's kind of just, I don't know, I suppose on longer trips it might be a place where you keep a couple of bags of baby wipes or something yep. like that. Or, you know, just the things you don't really need to get to that often. Yeah. So yeah. you get to baby wipes all the time. Yeah, right? true. <laughs> they don't put them back there. It's the end of the world. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's a space there. I kind of know that if I, you know, if I need to chuck something in there, then I've got a couple of pods there for yeah. it, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And they look great. They do. <laughs> they really yeah, do, they look, do great, look great, right? The yeah. black colour, so. Yeah, I'm a sucker for a grab me gear. Yeah, I know. And you and I love that, man. You've yeah. stuck with them. You've yeah. always, you know, any... So, I, I reckon I've mentioned this heaps of times as well on the channel or on the podcast as well about, you know, you or anyone on social media is a freaking influencer whether you like it or not yeah, so yeah, you probably don't want to be or i, yeah. I don't know you um I, I don't know his situation but you've influenced me for a lot of things whether yeah, you okay. want, yeah. know it or yeah, not you know what i mean so, yeah. yeah so uh, it, it, it all comes down to the the level of trust yeah so i know that you've used them for yeah. years dude yeah. and that's why i love them as well yeah, simple yeah, as that anything that we've missed here my man uh, I don't think so. No, not on this side. Yep. I feel like that's probably everything around here. Yep. Um, you watch. It's always the way, man. We'll finish this and you go, ah, yeah. oh, shit, forgot yeah. that. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, there's a rooftop tent on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big yeah. eye fucking saw. Yeah. Beauty. All right, well, um, what do you reckon? Move around the other side? Yeah. We're in the shade now. Yeah, mate. That's it. Beautiful. 
Okay, so we're around the opposite side. So this is the passenger side of the vehicle. Yeah. Another gull wing. We're under the awning. It's beautiful. It's perfect. I like doing run-throughs when it's this comfortable. Yeah. Um, so where do we start here, mate? Um, so this is pretty much just all of the electrical accessory side. Yeah. Um, we've got, I've got one of these Adventure Kings bloody pre-packed box kind of yeah. things, you know, that run all the plugs and stuff on there. I found that they, you know, the quality can be questionable at times, but yeah. Um, I thought I'd give it a go. I actually ended up uh, re-terminating everything and putting some genuine Anderson plugs and that kind of stuff yeah. on it as well. So that, um, you know, kind of just go over everything to make sure all your connections are proper and that kind of stuff. And yeah. I put it in, you know, change the few switches up and that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, well, here's a, you're a yeah, sparky, just, so. Yeah, just, yeah, <laughs> I was just so I was kind of comfortable with everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we kind of, this is just where obviously the fridge is powered from. Obviously you've got the inverter just in here. Yeah. The fire extinguisher up top. Um, just run a couple of little, um, Drawer and that kind of stuff yeah, too, yeah, so beautiful. I know how much amps is coming out, yeah, so how much is amps is going back in yep. through the solar. Um, so just that kind of stuff, you know, is what we've got over here. Got a couple of little lights and stuff in the back of the car, you know, just where we charge everything, like yeah. the drones and that and kind of stuff. And it's all grabbable, dude. Yeah, it's all from here. No worries. Yeah. He's a bit taller than me, so he yeah. can get in further. Yeah. While we've, um, while you're talking about amps in and amps out, yeah. can we, um, can we mention the solar panel? Because I've got footage of that. Yeah. But while we're here, yeah. so what solar panel? So. The solar panel is just, it's just an eBay job. I think it might be like Sunny or something like that, the brand. Oh, yeah, I know um, the brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. I, I bought that, oh, I must have been, probably one of the first things we bought in the car, to be honest, yeah. maybe six years ago. And it was 160 watts, I think it cost me 180 bucks. And it's still that up there. That, now. No. that would be much more expensive. No, now. and it's still, you know, it's still ticking along and does a job. You yeah. know, I'm sure it's certainly not the most efficient panel on the market, but it's been, it's just been bolted to the roof and I haven't had to worry about it, yeah. you know? Okay. And if yeah. that gets destroyed, you're yeah. not going to be worried at all, are you? Nah, no, um, not at all. So can I ask you, so with the solar thing, so I find I've got a 160 uh, watt blanket. Yeah. I find that does everything I need to. So that I, I think that feeds in around, on a real nice sunny day like this, yeah. uh, seven to eight amps. Yeah. Do, I don't suppose you'd know that figure around about for yours? Um, I... <laughs> It's about the same for this, um, for that panel up on the roof. Yep. It might be five or six. Um, it's probably not as efficient, but um, yeah, it's got a, it's got a fair old run to do down the roof and through the engine bay and back as well. So oh, true, dude. Um, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, think but, about it, that. but I think it normally picks up about five or six. You know, yep. you give it a clean down, it might pick up seven. Um, yeah, isn't that funny, man? Yeah, I've heard this thing where. If you cover, like on a big solar panel, if you mm. cover up that much, yeah, it like decreases up by like 50%. Yeah, that's and crazy, that's, man. That's most solar panels, hey. You get, yeah. you get the, um, the name evades me, of the, um, the other panels where you can cover up a full portion yep. and, and they still operate perfectly. Um, but yeah, I think with ones like that, you know, you get a, a branch kind of shadowing yeah. over or something like that and it drops its efficiency big time. Spot like this, yeah. where there's nothing in the way right now, yeah. that would. You, you, you'd wait a couple of hours and his battery's full. So yeah. you don't need to worry about it. And, it. and it's pointing right towards the sun today. Yeah. So you yeah, have golden yeah. there. Yeah, you know? so I mean, we've got so we've got the solar panel on the roof. Obviously the second battery, we've only got the second oh, battery. Oh yeah, nice, yeah. yeah. So we don't um, you know, don't have any batteries back here. We've yeah. just got the, the one, one, I think it's a 110 amp hour under the you know, deep cycle under the deep, corner. Yeah, yeah. But how um, long have you been running that for? Uh, that's been here, well, not that battery, we've changed the battery yeah, since, yeah. but um, yeah, that's, so the 60 series come factory with two batteries. Did it really? Yeah, well, I had the tw oh. they had the 24 volt option, so the, the, the jack imports are 24 volt, so yeah. there's a spot in the engine bay for a second battery. Um, oh. So the, the space is there for it. I don't think they come off the showroom floor as a 12 volt with two batteries, but there's a, there's a spot there to just put another battery. Oh, yeah. So um, Yeah, so I had two batteries in it when we got it. Yeah. Um, one was cactus, it was never really yeah, used. Cool, um, it was sitting around. Yeah, but you know, we, we put a 110 amp in a little red um, you know, isolator yeah, yeah. in there, and it just, just links them when the car starts, and then yeah. the alternator charges it. So, you know, I've, I've upgraded the alternator and stuff too, I'm sure we talk about that. Oh, later. yeah, but, yeah, excellent, man. We'll um, do that at the front, because it'll um, show yeah. like the winch and the yeah. bodies and all that, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Can you think of anything else here? Uh, obviously, another gull wing. Um, we'll talk about awning and rooftop afterwards. Yeah, no, there's probably not much else in here um, that I can really think of. I feel like it's... Um, that you won't forget. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to, oh, no, trying to duck under this oh, no. gull wing, um, <laughs> but nah, everything else. Got the, oh, I've got the fire extinguisher in there, but yeah. otherwise, that's that's probably it. on this side. It's a little electrical hub. Yeah, of course, and and obviously that. Is that fridge it, open? It's reversed at the moment to open the other way, but you can, oh, you can change the, in yeah, the kitchen you can change the lids. Yeah, yeah, it just depends on how you stack it in. So, yep. you know, sometimes I reverse it so the beer's open this way. You know, yeah, you can like still that. get to it from the back. Um, can you do one, one, you one? Can't. Okay, no, so you can't. Yeah, that's, that's right. the thing. So I think you have to change this middle hinge. 
on the fridge see, in I order to change them, um, and they screw out. So that makes sense. I've I've tried to figure out a way to get it going one one because I yep. I do that every day of the week. You've got the best of both worlds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> one side for beers, one side for kitchen. Yeah, That's what I do. So, yeah. <laughs> um, while I've got you guys, I'm going to um, put this camera around and show you the uh, spare wheel bag yeah. and the his gas setup. Yeah. All right, beauty. So we're at the uh, spare wheel carrier and his and Scotty's gas setup. Um, very recognisable brand and very recognisable bag, and they need a shout out because they're freaking incredible, dude. Yeah, um, it's Nathan Kelly. Is it yep, PM spot Canvas? on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've had this bag for a long time. Hey, um, great I, design, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm I'm a sucker for a good you know good canvas, canvas product. storage <laughs> solution. I am. I've got you know so many of them. I've got you know so I run this one. I I, I do run the Grab Me Gear one too. That's yep. on the Prado at the moment. Oh, so I've got one of each. So yep. you know they just go between you know depending on what trip. Yeah. This obviously fits a 33 inch tyre. Uh, yeah. Um, so this can't fit onto the Prado because of the wheel shape is yep, slightly gotcha. different. So I, I'm kind of running this on here now, so I can run the Grab Me Gear one on the Prado. Yeah. You know, so I'm not changing them all the time. Yeah, um, of course. But yeah, so obviously got that. It's got a couple huge of bag, too, yeah, massive like bag, big yeah. bag, side pockets. Yeah. You know, I don't think you have to worry about anything. You know, tearing off these nah, things. Eh? They're really solid. Nah. I like the fact that they can customize, and you know, you can you see all the extra covers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, they do yeah. really good work there. Hey. Um, yeah. You know, my, my old man's got one on his trip and he's got about seven pockets on it, you know, yeah, four different gotcha. things, ten, ten pegs and all kinds of stuff, straps and, yep. you know, really, oh, really... Can we do a, a shout out of them? Because I watch their channel as well. Of mum and dad? Yeah, yeah. Escape the Crowds. Yeah, escape, escape with the crowd. Escaping Crowds, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's that's Scotty's parent man. It is, yeah, so they're off doing their own thing at the moment, travelling yeah. around Australia. Absolutely so, awesome. It should be due home anytime soon. Which oh, be, really? Which would be nice because the kids need looking after, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need a couple of date nights. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, I do need a date night um, But yeah, no, they're off doing their own yep. thing, which you know makes me really happy to see that. Yeah, hey. man. No, you know, I'm sure here. us four kids gave them, a, gave them a hell of a time growing up. So um, it's really nice to see them off doing their own thing now, hey, and enjoying it. You know, they're out there living their best life now. Yeah. So yeah, because Scotty off camera, it's a rat bag, an absolute rat bag. So hey. don't be fooled. What? Are you doing? <laughs> what? Uh, moving on to this gas setup. So this is one I actually want to know about. I haven't asked you yet, but I've seen it during yeah. this trip and I love it. So yeah, yeah. So um, same bloke Nathan who made the gull wings for me yeah. um, made, oh. made these gas bottle holders. Um, just stumbled across them. I actually think I stumbled across his advert on Marketplace. Yep. Um, and I flicked him a message about it, and yeah, he's he's making he was making these at home. Um, basically, you know, I, I think. I think there was another size slightly smaller than this, so there was obviously this is the four litre one. Yep. Obviously it's lockable, um, you know. Yeah. This comes over it's, like that. It's, it is you know? heavy duty. Dude, yeah, you it? lift it straight up. I mean, uh, you've seen how much like we've been that. smashing around this weekend over yeah. all the wombat holes. Hey, it hasn't gone anywhere. Exactly. I'll throw so, some of that footage in now. Yeah. And um, that there, dude, like, I, that would last months and months, it does, wouldn't yeah, it, you know? it does, yeah. yeah. I think with the bottle we had in there before had probably been on the back for about two years. Yeah, the And, uh, you know, only I took it off the other day and it was low, so I thought I'll get a new one. Yeah. No, but... Um, so yeah. you run that, you run a hose from there to around there to your cooker? Or uh, around here or something? What, what uh, no, so the, the cooker sits on the back table there. I'll just pop this out of there and sit it down on the Oh, floor. magic. Yeah, yeah so I, I just take yeah. it out. Um, it's so light anyway, yeah, you it's know? it's kind of, you know, to be a two metre run around there. So, I'll, yeah, I'll just, you know, unlock it and pop it around. Yeah. On the Clever. floor there, yeah, run a little hose. So, how low would you be to steal a gas bottle? Oh, honestly, no. well, you know, don't, don't put it out. <laughs> don't put a pass. No, don't put a pass on people. Eh? <laughs> no, you're yeah. right. Yeah, I suppose that's the thing with cars as well. You know, I've had I've had stuff pinched off this before. Oh, have you? Yeah, I've had my spotties and stuff. My first set of spotties and stuff pinched off there. Jesus. Went, out, went out went out for a date night actually, and came out in the bloody spotty turned the spotties on the way home, and they were gone. Oh, Just didn't come on. And I was like, oh. dude, yeah, pisses yeah. me off. Um, sorry, man. I've interrupted, um, and you know, expect a lot of that. I apologise. <laughs> um, and then this, I like this fitting here. So yeah. that, that's obviously ratcheted yeah. down. It just bites down into it. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to buy the? I know this is a small detail, but did you have to buy the ratchet straps? Uh, no, I actually think it came supplied, but, but it, didn't come with, look, it didn't come with a black one, which, you know, so I bought the black one because it was done by <laughs> Yeah, I think, it, I think it came with like an orange one or something like that, yeah, and I thought, yeah. right, I need to get a black one to kind of just, you know, keep it all colour-coded. Yeah. I'm, I'm big on colour-coding. Yeah, no, you know? it's, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Um, but yeah, no, so I just bought a black one from Bunnings. Um, and it kind of gives away the ratchets down. It kind of it just bites down into the rubber of the tire, yeah. you know. So it kind of into yeah. the tread. Yeah. yeah, and it's also got um, pinch weld there yeah. to, to protect yeah. the canvas and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Just clever, just mm. clever little things. I was actually um, look, looking at something similar for mine as well. Yeah. But the only thing about mine, not to bring up my car, but there's so much weight on that 
on the bigger back, door on the yeah, 76 door, man yeah. and if i put more on there it yeah. you see me i'm trying to you know yeah. it, it weighs it down yeah. and it makes it a prick to open. have the same thing on the prado oh, with, one, with one big door i yeah. put, I put, the, I put this on the prado too yeah um, oh, beauty, because it's just a quick swap. Yeah, under the ratchet, under the straight, ratchet straight over, ah, yeah, back on again. Yeah, yeah, but it's the same kind of thing. I know they, they can be notorious for overloading your rear door. Yeah. So the more weight you put on there, you Spot know, over on, time man. your hinges start to wear, don't they? Yeah, so. yeah, and that's what's happened. So I'm going to have to either... See, what do you do there? Do you, I know I'm bringing it off course here. What do you do there? Buy a new door? Would um, it be a new door? No, or so I know, that, um, I know that with the Prado, so yeah. K-On, do, um, they do door hinge spaces. So you can just back you can just back your hinge off, put a little spacer in there, and it picks your door height back up. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm going yeah, I'm yeah, to I'm gonna go and see yeah, them, see if they do something. That's half the reason why I've, I'm still running this on the Prado, because I know that I can just put a spacer behind it when the door starts to sag. Oh, you clever bugger. Yeah. You'll have to show me how to do that. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not even yeah. joking. Um, where next, dude? What do you think? Uh, Let's go know. rooftop and awning, yeah. and then we'll finish on okay. the front and interior. Yeah, sounds good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers, mate. Cheers, man. It is definitely not 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> no, it's 8.50, isn't it? 8.50, you're right. It's not 9.30. <laughs> Come on, I tried yeah. to add on. Um, so we're sort of, this part here, it feels like the camera's pointing right up. I promise you we're in the shot. It gets all the good angle, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> but um, I thought this part here, we could run through up top. So yeah. everything on the roof, dude. So you, you go ahead, yeah. spit it out. Uh, so on the top, we've got, uh, we've got one of the Bush Company. I think it's the... Um, Called the A27 or something, or the um, I have to get the name. So, one, one of the Bush Company rooftop tents, anyway. One of the first ones they did, yeah. Um, you were saying, yeah, you say you've had that for, one of the original for a ones. few yeah. while, man. Yeah, so actually, um, we bought that from the Bush Company before they started, or just as they were starting in Australia, just as they were setting up. So, we've had it on the roof, but it must have been close to six years now, maybe five and a half. Yeah, um, and we've loved it, you know, it suited our camping setup really well. It doesn't get used as much now because we've obviously got the kids, it's really hard to get four of us up in there. Yeah, of course. Which is why it kind of stays on this car and gets used more so for kind of week weekends like this yeah. and that kind of stuff. Or, yeah. you know, if Anna and I get a chance to go away without the kids and yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so we've got that. Obviously doubles as a roof rack as well. You can yeah. load the roof, which is good. I think up to about 80 kilos. So yeah. you, can get, you can put a kayak on there. Obviously you start getting really tall then, but you can. Um, but yeah, we've got the solar panels and max racks to shovel. Um, and then I've got a couple of um, ratchet buckles up there as well, just to tie down some some stuff if yeah. I need to. You know, you can throw a big bag of rubbish or something up there and strap it onto the roof. So I've got a couple of questions. Yeah. So, um, how have you found for wind noise? Any any, uh, any notice? Wind noise has been fine. I yeah. haven't noticed any whistling at all, to be honest Beautiful. with you. Um, and then how does it go in on like a windy night when you're sleeping in it? Uh, yeah, fine. It's, it's really sturdy. I think the Looks way it, I think the way that the um, the spring poles for the little awning that comes around mm -hmm. the side are kind of, I think they're, they're quite rigid, so obviously it allows wind to kind of get in underneath it, but also escape it at the same time, yep. the way that it ramps out the sides. Yeah, yeah, love um, that. That's it. I think it's a good design with the awning, hey, and because the canvas is so thick. I was just going to mention that. The canvas that, is yeah. so thick, um, so it kind of, it doesn't flap around at all. Like, yep. you, know, you know, I think sometimes with the thinner material, you can yes. hear a lot of, you know, the rattling and the zips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you get a little bit of zip noise. The zips are quite heavy duty. You know, some, I know a lot of people generally put a little bit of um, heat shrink or something over the zip ends. Oh, yeah. You know, just That's to clever. stop the metal on metal, which there is a good go. idea. Yeah. yeah, I haven't done that for hours because I've probably never really been enough of a nuisance for me to, you know, warrant doing it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't be one of those little finicky jobs. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I think the canvas is really good. We've had no issues at all with you know water getting in and that kind of stuff. Oh, good. I yeah. was going to ask about that no, next. Yeah. No, we've had, no, even we've had a couple of nights out there where it's kind of get us side on. Obviously, you get a little you bit. Can't of, help that. You get, yeah, <laughs> you, can't you, know, you get a you get a little bit of like residual kind of moisture on the outside. Yeah. Kind of canvas feels cold, but we've never had any water like come kind of come through oh. to the point where sitting there going we can't you know can't sleep or anything in it. So yeah, it's been it's been really good. Really oh, good. Good. Man. So do you, I, I don't suppose you know what it weighs. Uh, yeah, right so it around. weighs 87 kilos. I think that's not too yeah. bad for how sturdy it bloody yeah, looks. I'm pretty sure it's 87, yeah. And mattress. Uh, yeah, so I think it, it comes with a it comes with a foam, 100, yep. 100 mil foam mattress, oh, shit, and we've just nice. got a little egg topper, you know. Yeah, yeah on, a mattress on top, top like yeah, a Yeah, a little mattress yep. topper on, on top of that. So, yep. yeah, very comfortable. You know, slept like a log last night. Oh, good. So there's one more question. This is a weird one. So yeah. <laughs> I reckon there's a lot of people that would be thinking the same thing. Yeah. Pissing during the night. Is that a f like? Is that annoying, or is it uh, sort of like a bottle and a hose, or no <laughs> bottle and a hose? <laughs> no, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm I don't really get up that often in the middle of the night. No, oh, Anna well, does. She go. just goes, gets down the ladder. And, you know, I'd love for her. her to know, even if you can ask her yeah. during whether she finds that annoying or where, whether it's an easy yeah. thing for to yeah. give up for the comfort. I mean, it's, it's easy. It's easy enough to. It's, I mean, it's a small. 
it's a small problem to yeah. have, isn't it? As well. No, yeah, I, I know, dude. Yeah. I still have to get out of my swag yeah. to, you know, to piss away. Yeah. I know what you mean, though. You can you know, wake up <laughs> in the middle of the night and you're cl climbing down a ladder in the middle of winter and your feet are sore. Oh, that's and you exactly what I was saying. You're dirt on your on feet, on dust them off before you get back in. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, don't, no, I don't think it's enough of a hindrance. I mean, I'm sure sh at the time you'd be going, it'd be nice to just, you know. But I guess you still have to do that with anything. You still have to get up. you do, yeah. So, yeah, just hold on to it, eh? I'm always very interested. Um, oh, okay, so awning now. Yeah, so um, the awning as well is a, is a bush company awning. Um, it's kind of a bit of a no-brainer, really, I think, for me, yep. um, getting another bush company product. Um, God, they're so well made, aren't they, mate? Yeah. You know, the white KKZ, yeah, I know they they're are. the best out there. Yeah, they are. You know, I know, I'm not sure who had one first. It might have been Harry, actually, when he had yeah. one on the 80. Gotcha. Um, we were heading up on our honeymoon, and I... Um, we actually, what we used to have, we used to have an old Oz tent one with the yep. poles that set up, and yep. we got up to Cape Le Beak and one of the knuckles snapped, you know, as I was setting it up. And yeah. It was really hot and it became a real four leg, so, yeah. you know, I called up Dean at the bush company and I said, I need one, and he said there's one on the way, so. I mean, we've all been there, right, where the awning oh, goes up, you're like, living, no, was not living. doing that yeah, again. <laughs> yeah, we just got some money as a wedding gift as well, and I was like, oh, I can buy one, but yeah, I'm getting one right now, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I suppose that was a treat to ourselves. It's, yeah, you know, wedding gift, I guess. We'll um, see how quick it comes. Up. I mean, that's yeah. Let's be honest, Bush Company's like the best name in the game, as far yeah, as I know. They'll have, have, have to be up there anyway. One of the first you know. names that jumps to my mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of companies making awnings now, and I think there's a there's a lot of good 270 awnings now because Bush Company probably in the next price bracket up with a couple of others, and then there's yep. a lot of like middle ground, you know, which is a really good bang bang for buck. Like the second awnings, so yeah. I, I love like Darchies and that kind of stuff. I think they're all kind of in that range, and I think they're. um you know, they're all really good value too. Um, I just, I kind of just keep going back to the whole canvas thing. I, I've never had to worry about that at all in any, yeah, you know. It's so I heavy mean, duty. Yeah, it's like yeah. granted, I'm not going to put it up in 70 km hour winds, mm -hmm. um, but I've had a couple of nights where it's been howling. Yeah. Know, where I've kind of gone to bed, it's been still, you've left it up, yep. and then it's been howling in the middle of the night, and I've kind of stuck an eye out, and it's not moving. I'm like, yeah, oh, beautiful. He's a mind man. Yeah, yeah, so that's it, yeah. Magic, man. So, I, have we remembered everything? Um, yeah, I think we have in terms of that. The only thing we probably haven't captured is the light bar on the roof. Oh, yeah. So um, that's what I was going to do yeah. next. I was going to yeah, do the front we'll do end and then I'll do the spot. Yeah, that. sounds good. But otherwise, I think that's probably it. I can't wait. The, my favourite part is going to be the interior. The interior is the best part of this one here. Um, so, yeah, next we'll jump on to front end, lights and uh, light bars, etc. <laughs> All right, so at the front of the vehicle now. <laughs> the vehicle. <laughs> I never say that. Why did I say that? Um, Let's go over the lights. Um, I don't know, yeah, they're beauties as well. I, don't, I need to remember the roof one. So yeah, Scotty, run us over the lights. Uh, yeah, so I've got the, um, I think they're the nine inch Steady Type X Pros yep. on the front. Um, used to have a set of Kings ones, but they're the ones that got pinched. Yeah, got you. Um, so it's got the, the, the um, Type X Pros on the front, which I, I like. Um, I've really enjoyed these actually. Yeah. Like the covers are a, a nice little touch, but they always come off. Yeah, you have know, you seen the, um, the ones they do during COVID? That have the mask, mask across them, yeah. Clever, right? Clever, dude. Yeah. Clever oh, Brownie's market. got a nice set on the patrol, actually. Yeah, I can't has, remember yeah. what this one's got in there, but um, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and I suppose up top we've got the uh, up to 50 inch steady yep. um, light bar as well, which kind of just is a good, good way to kind of fill that gap, I guess. Yep. You know? um, so, having a blue bonnet, how do you find that goes? Do you get glare off the bonnet at all? Yeah, a little bit. I don't um, mind the glare, I'll be yeah, honest with you. I yeah. actually don't mind it. Uh, yeah, it lights up the cab a bit. I don't mind it too much. Yeah. To be honest with you, the only thing that, the only thing that I do find is that. Catches, it, catches the back of this oh. and then puts a split. I think that annoys me. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's not even that significant. Yeah, know, okay. Just, but I mean, it, it gets this a little bit. I have kind of tilted it up slightly so it obviously doesn't get as much yeah. glare. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's handy for night tracks when you're yeah, trying to get the You nearly had to use them last night. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just thinking that. Take 10 hours, 10 hours taking all the covers off before I can use them, eh? Yeah, you know, true. Put them all back on afterwards. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, radio, maybe you mention this while we're here. Yeah, we got, um, uh, so I think it's the 2.1 DVI GB GME antenna. Yeah. Um, yeah, on the little drop down hinge here, so that just tucks away. Oh, I love that, well, there. There's my answer to the, the light bar problem, if I can just... Yeah, there you go. You need two hands. Just tucked down there. I like that, man. Yeah. That's wicked. Wait, so is that a GME product? Yeah, it's just a GME product, yeah. yeah. So I think about, there might be about 100 bucks or something. I think you can tuck them out of the way, I suppose. You know, if you've got a real tall antenna, yeah. you can tuck, you know, tilt for 90 degrees and lean it back towards your car. Get like high clearance yeah. and that kind of stuff, which yeah. is a, you know, a nice little touch. Um, yeah, just got all of that sitting on um, an old ARB Deluxe bar. Yep. Yeah. Um, with a. 
very old Dominator Kingswinch in there. So how long have you had that winch in there for? Uh, six years, I reckon. Six years. Six years. Yeah. See that? Oh, I reckon a lot of those brands cop a lot of shit. Yeah. But I've heard. I reckon you cop that with every brand. You cop that with ARB. Yeah. You cop that with Steady. You know, mm. people who aren't happy with it. Yeah. And have had shit experiences. Yeah. That thing, six years. Yeah. I actually know another mate, Paul, uh, Paul MacArthur, if you're watching, bloody legend, um, ha has yeah. tried to kill it and he mm. just can't, man. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, I've used it I've used it a fair bit. I use it a lot at home, actually. Like, obviously, on property, pulling out a lot of fencing and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah, I've used it probably more so at home than I have out on the tracks. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been able to, yeah, I haven't been able to kill it, so I just thought, well, I'll just keep running it until I. 100%. Done, man. Yeah. Can I ask what you'd get next? Um, well, I'm actually I'm about to buy a uh, Winch for Prado, yeah. um, so I'm probably going to get one of the Runba yeah, nice. 11 yep. XPs, I think, for yep. Prado. So I'd Excellent. probably, I mean, if I'm happy with that, I'll, I'll get one for this, I guess, if yeah, this good. one ever fails. But, yeah. um, is that pretty much it for the front? Um, Should we mention the motor? Like, what motor's in this? Yeah, this, yeah. So we've got, there'll um, be diehards out there. Yeah, so the motor's probably one of the, well, the only thing that I haven't touched, like, I guess, on the car. Um, it's got the old 2H uh, 4 litre diesel in it. Yep. Which is a real old donkey motor. Um, is there a reason why you haven't done anything to it? Uh, yeah, because it. I mean, it's done. Obviously, it's very heavy now, yeah. and it's, it's never had any great pace at all. Mm -hmm. I think I was saying over the radio the other day. The only time I get the speeds down here with a good, yeah. good wind behind me. Means um, you have to drive it properly. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you got to put a lot of effort into lining up your run on the yeah. to come into a hill and that kind of stuff. It. Yeah, so it, it's slow, but it just it just goes. Yeah, you know that's yeah. the thing. It'll just you know you just be prepared to not get anywhere in a hurry. Yeah. and just put along you know um, so I think it's always kind of done me well um, I've done the I've done the injectors and stuff on it but I've never done any work it's got any exhaust on it but yeah yeah in gotcha. terms of I've never you know I've never seriously considered putting a turbo on the side of it you know I know where to take it no worries you yeah, know? Like yeah there's plenty of room there for it and yeah. a lot of people do it too just to give it a bit of extra towing power and stuff as well and then obviously there's a 12 HT upgrade option you can do yeah. with a factory you know factory turbo diesel option so you can hear it, dude. It never misses a beat. Slow Hearing these things take over, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. So it's it low mileage mind. for it, you know. Yeah. So really, like a lot of people will tell you these things are like a million cases. Yeah. You know, so in that regard, it's you know, it's kind of just, just happy to kind of leave it there, right? Yeah. Kind of keep just keep it. Do you service it yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I service Beautiful. it myself. Yeah. Um, five thousand, ten thousand. Uh, really? generally for five thousand. Do you? Yeah. yeah. That's why it's running bloody beautiful. Yeah, speed, right? I do. Yeah, I do it generally every five thousand. On it, you know, for a trip or something like that, just yeah, kind of tinker away. But yeah, I've, you know, I've rebuilt the, the cooling system and stuff on it, you know, yep. um, and that kind of stuff. Done a lot of work with the um, transmission and stuff. Had that rebuilt. Yep. You know, both um, both diffs rebuilt um, with lockers in them. So oh, wicked, yeah. yeah. So, but I, I didn't, I didn't do any of the rebuilding myself. But I'm you know, happy enough to get underneath and pull the diff centers out. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So time. yeah, <laughs> and it's good because it, it just kind of teaches you to become familiar with the car. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'd like to do a bit more of that. Yeah. You know, kind of tinker, I guess. Um, yeah. And I've got, like, I've got no intention of ever selling this thing, right? So yeah. it's not like I need to provide a full service history of it. No, no, nah, exactly, you know? man. Yeah. Mm. Maybe, maybe your uh, your young son can have it when he. Imagine. That. Well, yeah. I know, you know, because I was. Is that I a think possibility? I was, yeah, it is. I think I was talking to Robbie about it last night, yeah. actually. You know, I think like you know, ultimately one day I'd like to restore it right back to factory. Oh. You know, like the day it came off the showroom yeah. floor kind of stuff. With you know, him top of it. Yeah, we could. Yeah, you know, he's probably not like my my little dude. Like he's only three, almost yeah. three, but he's a real like tinkerer as well. Like, yeah, he's always down in the shed with me, holding the spanner, putting on a bowl. You know, he, you know, I can tell he's kind of thinking about that yeah. stuff. So if he grows up wanting to kind of get into that stuff, then. You know, I don't. It wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to no. kind of you know rebuild this with him. I think, oh, you know, as a real nice kind of project to do one day. So I think yeah, it'd be good, good fun. You know, unless he um wants to rebuild another car or something. We should be right. Be up electric by then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying uh, the rebuild diesel Tesla. won't exist in ten years, eh? When he yeah. really starts swinging spanners. No. Nah. Not while people like him are around. Eh? No, I, I hope won't so. let it. Yeah, I know. I hope so. But yeah, look, it'd be it'd be nice to do. I don't know when. You know, there's there's a couple of little things with rust and stuff on it that you know need to be addressed at some point um, but I don't yeah I'd, I'd like to kind of get into it but life's just too busy to kind of oh, seriously at the moment doing yeah that. yeah you know I want to enjoy it you know as long as it's running yeah. long as you, and, and it and makes you sort of worry a bit less out yeah. here yeah you know I can beat it up a little bit absolutely yeah knowing that you're going to do that yeah. later on yeah 100 yeah sweet yeah so I think that's pretty much all this covered I'll, I'll try and get a bit of footage of the actual motor uh, if I remember probably won't um, but let's do the interior next yeah. day. Okay, cool. So one thing we did miss, guys, was the snorkel. So before we actually do the interior, I thought I'd just um, get Scotty to explain that as well. Yeah, so this is a snorkel and it sucks in air. <laughs> 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 
So obviously, you know, you spend a lot of time driving up here, so we tried to make it as comfortable as possible in the front. Um, I suppose on the, one, one of the longer trips, I think when we went over um, to Adelaide a few years back, we decided to pull out the, um, the vinyl seats in the front. We used to have the big three-quarter bench seat here in the front, which took a lot of convincing to get rid of that, um, get rid of that to Anna because she used to curl up in a ball and sleep on it while we were driving and that kind of stuff, nice. which was nice. Yeah, um, comfy. But yeah, I thought we'd, um, we'd upgrade to some XR6 seats. Um, Hurricane do a really good ad adapter plate to kind of put in XR6 seats into here. And it allowed us to have some room for a centre console fridge too, which has been really handy. I think you and I were talking about that earlier, yeah. week, weren't we? Um, yep. Just about being able to keep some cold drinks in the front. Um, obviously, it's really good for an armrest too and a drink holder at the same time. Yeah, good height, isn't it? Yeah, it is a good height when you're kind of cruising along, you know, hand on the steering wheel yep. and that kind of stuff too. So Yeah, it is. Um, it actually looks really comfortable there. Yeah. So it's you know it's good the handbrake kind of slips down the side of it which is good um, and then yeah I guess up up front here you know I've changed a few switches in here so we've got you know the light bar and the uh, spotlights in here got the air compressor and the diff locker rear, rear air diff locker as well oh, so I'm switched on there as well so obviously if you're airing up you just um, chuck that on and then jump out the car and the compressor will be ready to go beautiful um, yeah the GME handheld that goes with the antenna up the front is what we've got in here as well and I don't think you know well I've got I'll mention these actually we've got a yeah. few um got a few of these little pins up here we um started collecting them on our honeymoon actually at all the all the places we went to um thought it'd be nice you know a lot of people get the magnets or something like that yeah I um, thought the thought the pins might be a nice little way to go to kind of remember some of the places we went to on our honeymoon which was good all the oh, places that sold them magic yeah and uh what else we got we got a couple i got a little volt volt uh, meter over here so i can keep an eye on what both the batteries are doing underneath the steering wheel here yeah um which is quite nice and we've got i'll mention this too so we've got a um an engine watchdog monitor here so what that does is it actually monitors the running temperature of the engine while you're driving um which is good so you kind of know the gate that old temp gauges on these can be a little bit hit and miss sometimes yep. um it's kind of hard to get an accurate idea of how hot you are running um especially being as heavy as we are and in hotter conditions sometimes. So I've just got that fed off the thermostat housing, which is a pretty good indicator of where the heat is. Um, and I can kind of just glance down at that and kind of see what our temperatures are doing, you know. If I Did you install of... that yourself? Yeah, yeah, oh, they're, 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 a, they're a real easy kit to put in, you know, you just need a just need a um, signal supply um, for it. And then, you know, you run your thermostat to somewhere and they do other kits as well, where you can monitor your oil temperature and um, yep. coolant temperature and that kind of stuff too. So just wanted to, you know, kind of, I know what kind of range I need to be in when I'm driving at this and when it starts to get a bit warm. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so you, and you how, know, do you, how do you cool it down? Just take it easy a bit? Or? Yeah, just take it easy a bit, you know, like I think I find normally that sitting in, you know, 100, 105 in that, in that kind of yep. sweet spot of like where it wants to be. Um, obviously sometimes, you know, if you're punching into a big headwind on a hot day, you know, struggles to yep. cool down a little bit more, so you kind of might just back off a little bit and then, or pull know. over and just you know have a piss or something. You, do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean it. Like it never really gets to the point where like I've got the alarm set. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so okay. Like, so it will. It will. If I don't have my eyes on it, I'm kind of getting distracted by something else. The alarm will go off anyway, and then that will just tell you that you know you don't want to be getting much hotter than where you are yeah so, gotcha. you know there's a couple of steps there you kind of before you're at that point where your engine's got yep. real warm anyway um, oh that's wicked i yeah, like the, so the alarm kind of, thing you can yep. kind of back off yeah but I'm, I'm just probably more so on the hill climbs and stuff when you're you know holding down third for a long time trying yeah, to get up course. a hill and you, you can just see your temp going like that yeah um you know that's kind of the stuff that is really handy for you kind of you know just know to kind of back off a bit and yeah just, just crawl up you know which is just one of those things you get used to when you're um when you are not you know you're trying to not be anywhere in a hurry yeah guess, yeah you know, exactly which is okay you know yeah, it's fine. take yeah. your time dude yeah yeah but um yeah i think that's probably it up here yeah um, beautiful obviously got a couple of little storage pods on the on the dash and yep. stuff as well you know I normally run one over anna's side as well um just keep the little handheld and you know the phone and the you know the tire gauge yep. which we're using a lot this weekend as well um, <laughs> up and down up and down up and down the compressor got to work out has done yeah but um yeah, that's kind of, I think that's kind of it over here. Yeah. You know, it's all kind of like like to try and keep the dash, you know. Yeah, I see. It's stuff. not. It, it's uncluttered. Yeah. It's practical. Yeah. And I, I, it seems like the theme for this car with you is you want longevity. Um, yeah, I do. do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, by not doing much to the engine, by servicing it regularly yeah. or even earlier, yeah. and also you know alarms, you yeah. know to keep it cool. Yeah, you, you know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, seems I mean, like I that's a theme. To, yeah, I want it to be you know hassle free when we're out on the yeah, road. Yeah, that's know, I just it. Want it to run well. So I spend a lot of time kind of just tinkering over and servicing it, and you know changing components, even if they're not yeah. quite worn where they, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, kind of become familiar enough with the car to. Um, feel like I'd be reasonably confident, you know, fixing most stuff on yeah. the side of the road now, which is good because mm, that's so mechanical be nice feeling. cars, you know, they don't have, they don't have much electrical in them no. at all, hey, which is nice. No computer. You know, <laughs> yeah, or mechanical injection kind of stuff, so, um, yeah. 
Good man, Good. awesome. Yeah. All right, I reckon we'll move on to the back area. All right, so I suppose just in the back here, this is the um, the other side of the dividing wall, I guess, that we were talking about earlier when we were in the rear of the car. Um, so obviously, I've just got this wrapped in some marine carpet here at the moment. I normally just throw a whole load of pods on here, to be honest with you, for storage. Um, storage for the kids and that kind of stuff. Um, and you made that? Yeah, 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 I made that up. Yeah, it actually, I didn't make the frame. I, it was Someone was selling it as a full height one that went all the way down to the floor. So this cuts off just behind the seat here. Ah. But they were selling it and it had like the, um, almost like the jail bar kind of grid mesh in it. Yeah, I yeah. Cut, I cut that all out and just put a big piece of board in it. Okay, um, okay. So it's just a half height one because I didn't really see the benefit of having it. I think it might have been like a dog cage or something, dog you know barrier or yeah. something like that. Um, <clears> you know, I cut that out and put a piece of board in it, wrapped it in some carpet. So just as a way to kind of fix, you know, see all the bolts here, all the fixings of the, you know, the compressor and stuff on the yep. back. Still neat though. Looks nice and neat, you yeah. know. Yeah. Except for that cobweb. Get rid of him. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've, you know, I've kind of just found this as a spot where you can clip things onto. Obviously the first aid kit was on here before. I normally hook the drone bag on there too, the laptop bag as well. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so they're kind of just up and out of the way. They're not getting things fall on, fall on them in here. Um, and then, yeah, it's normally just got a few storage pods on here as well, you know, for those bits you need to access yeah. quite quickly. Um, you know, this is more so where like the um, the baby wipes and that kind of stuff are kept, the sunscreen. Yep. This where do you keep your axe, dude? Where do you keep an axe for camping? Um, so the axe normally it normally goes on the rear tire carrier. Oh, to be honest beautiful! With you. Yeah, yeah. There's a, yep. I've got a spot there on it where I can where I can strap it to the rear tire carrier. Yep. Um, sometimes it slides straight underneath this seat here. Yep. Um, yep, there's gotcha. a perfect spot there where you can just slide the axe straight underneath. Yep. Like the um the, you know jumper leads if you need them and that kind of yep. stuff. But there's a there's a really good spot underneath here where I can get my um. I think it's the uh, the Fiscus X27. Yeah, plus, beautiful. Like, splitting axe yeah. right underneath here, and it kind of you know sides under here. Nothing else will fit in that spot except for the axe, which is yeah, which lovely. Is so, and what are these black duck? Uh, nah. So these are um, they're not black ducks. They're a I can't remember the name of the the guy that made them for me. Um, good mate of um he was a good mate of Taylor Doors actually. Okay. Um, but yeah, he um made made some up for me eh? and um for my old uh, the old cruiser seats we had in here as well. So I've still got those covers on at home, but. Um, just wanted to kind of try and protect the seats. Yeah, of course, know. man. Um, yep. Because, yeah, got cloth seats in the back here, so. Oh, um, right, oh, yeah. Yeah, so I kind of just wanted to protect them a bit, you know. Um, Why is that, mate? Hey? Is that because of the Holland track? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might, it might have been. It might have had something to do with that. Yeah, I didn't really do a good job of protecting them on the Holland track, so. Um, yeah. oh. But no amount of water is going to, no amount of seat cover is going to protect you from a car full of water, is it? You know? Yeah. No, I just magic. Threw, threw those seats away. And yeah, yeah. yeah we, we, we move on to the next set. <laughs> so, coming to the sharp and pointy end of uh, this walkthrough, and I thought we'll finish, but no, nah, we'll, we'll always forget stuff. Tires and suspension, why not? We'll run through the whole 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 shebang. Mm. Um, go ahead, my man. Yeah. So we've um we've got the, uh, the BF Goodrich KM3s on this, uh, obviously in the muddy. In a 285 75 16, which is placed about 33 inch yeah, tire. Yep. Um, pretty kind of standard. Um, prior to that, we had some of the um, Vulcan roll peaks. Oh, yeah? Um, right then? I did, yeah, I did rate them. We've gone and put them on the Prado now, actually. Oh, the new right. version of the all terrains, yeah. Um, I think the only thing, like, I do I do really like the muddies, obviously, you know, everyone says they look great and that kind of stuff. They've, they've actually performed really well, too. Had a couple of issues with some wear, um, wear patterns on them, um, on a couple of the ones, but I, I probably didn't appreciate the amount of. Um, maintenance you need to be rotating my tyres to look after them properly. Yeah, gotcha. You know, this was the first set of muddies I had, um, bought a set of six. Um, so, you know, I had a couple of wear issues with one or two because I didn't rotate them properly and then, yeah. you know, the rest of them have been sweet. So, um, I think I've done, these ones, these are my two spare new ones, but yeah. I think overall I've probably done about 50,000 on them now. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, they've still got a fair bit of chunk yeah, left, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, these front ones certainly do. The ones in the rear are okay. Um, yeah. They're probably getting somewhere near, to be honest. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but yeah, the, um, so, you know, they're obviously the tyres we're running and we've got a, a two inch uh, EFS. Oh yeah, this. good. Yeah. yeah, I wanted you to mention that. So. Yeah, which how's is, that? How's that yeah. travelling? Yeah, it's not bad. I um, I, I don't mind it. The, there was, there's a couple of issues with the, the leaf packs at the front. I think I think yeah. it might be a bit of a notorious issue with the EFS. To be honest with you, it's almost like the spring packs about an inch too short. Okay. So it kind of it leaves your shackle height quite up and down as opposed to kind of the 45 on the front. Yeah, so gotcha. you, it almost feels a lot harsh, harsher of a ride in the front when you're kind of impacting all the time because it doesn't have that, the leaf doesn't have the ability to kind of bounce as much as you'd like. Oh, right, um, oh, gotcha. Yeah, so it's kind of, um, yeah, I'll put anti-inversion shackles on there. So when we were on the Holland, Sony last time we were on the Holland, yeah. bloody, 
Yeah, good. I'm glad you mentioned went that. in there and um, you know, high centered the diff and the yep. the, um, the shackles rolled back in. Yeah, gotcha. You know, part of me thinks that might be because the shackles were already kind of the wrong angle because the yep. lifts a bit too short. But right. I didn't have any anti inversion shackles on there anyway. So yeah. obviously, when we got that rectified, we put a set of anti inversions on to kind of prevent that from happening again. Far out. Yeah. Okay. Did you fix that on the track then? Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, so the basically the shack was just as soon as the diff kind of got like, high centered in the middle of the mud, yeah, it basically just went the shack was just went straight under themselves, like yeah, that. gotcha. Um, yeah, and we sacked a whole load of wood and kindling and stuff we could find, um, you know, along with a couple of car jacks, it kind of yeah, built it all yeah. up. And then we found, I don't, I don't know if we had a we had an axe handle or something like that, and yeah. we basically we stuck it underneath the shackle and managed to kind of like it back down, around yeah. by jumping on it. It was, it was real bush mechanic kind of stuff, but it worked. You're gonna you know, do what you're gonna yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was just, I mean, it was still driving, but it was driving like a real real pig you know, yeah. after those shackles rolled in. Ah, uh, interesting. It was doing some really weird stuff. So, yeah, we managed to fix it, it took an hour or two, but yeah. you know, that was part of the consequences. Of you know, all of the consequences for driving through that big puddle. Was, <laughs> yeah. Still paying for it. Yeah, them. I'm still paying for it now. Still give me shit about the seats. So, um, but yeah, so that was yeah, that was kind of the reason as to why we um, put the anti-version shackles on anyway. Yeah, you yeah know, but gotcha. the suspension all in all has been hasn't been too bad, eh? Um, yeah, I've always wondered how it goes with um, leaf springs on the front. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess you have to make sure you set them up correctly, you know, yeah, not make so. them too stiff and otherwise yeah. it would be... How have you found it? Have you found, found it quite comfortable still? Or are you used to it? Or Well, you know, I always used to think it was... I've, I've never complained about the suspension in this, you, yeah. know, you know, bar the kind of little um, short short shackle, uh, short spring kind of thing at the front. Yeah. Um, I've always kind of thought it was quite comfortable, to be honest with you. Yeah. And now, obviously, we've got a Prado. Which is yeah. very comfortable. Yeah, you know, you I, have noticed a bit of a well. When I yeah, well, I suppose when I took it away this weekend, we've obviously been driving, like, you know, even doing the tracks going across. Yeah. This is um, a bit more agricultural than I remember, but yeah. but I love it. You know, like, I love it. You know. <laughs> agricultural, I like that. Yeah, thing. I'm going to um, use that now. Yeah, but um, it, yeah, it's been it's been quite good. You know, I can't complain too much. It's an old car. That's what you expect. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, exactly. If you want to keep driving it, you're going to race it, don't you? So. No, I think there's a reason why people like you keep these yeah. cars. You know, I, I don't know what what. what I'll ask you that in the next bit, actually. Um, we'll get yeah. off our knees now for yeah. this. We um, do, um, and we've got some airbags in the back. Oh, oh shit, let's yeah. go over there. Yeah. Uh, so just while we are talking about suspension, thought we'd just stuck back here and have a quick chat about what we've got in the back. Um, so we've got a lot of weight in the back of the car here. Um, you know, you've got a, a long range fuel tank that carries 200 litres as well in the back. Um, but we do have some airbags as well, which I put in um, some Firestone airbags in the uh, in the rear here too, which is kind of just good for adjusting the ride height with a bit of extra load. It's also good for towing and stuff to, you know, to kind of bring it back up to level. Um, kind of air down, just run run kind of a constant 10 to 15 PSI in there, just to kind of balance out the ride height and obviously just adjust it, you know, when we need to, when we, you know, obviously put in a bit of extra load and that kind of stuff too, so, um, yeah. Oh, I didn't mention the Anderson plug down there as well. Oh, yeah. And your rear bar and everything. Oh, yeah. well, this is the factory rear bar. Oh, um, wow, okay. Yeah, so that's the factory one. I've just given it a, oh. lick, just given it a lick of paint. So that's yeah. one of the, um, the old school Kmart tire carriers oh. on there. Um, yeah, so I've just painted it black to kind of keep it color coded. The old gray was a bit faded. Um, yep. Done a couple of little mod like brackets for the um, for the latch and stuff just to kind of stiffen them up a bit. Um, but yeah, you got the Anderson plug down here just for the solar, yeah. for the solar blanket that I've got. Just, oh, just beauty! Double in. up. They yeah. work in conjunction yeah. with each. Oh, yeah, they do. Great, yeah. So I can just run a lead straight into the back. You know, if the sun's out this side of the car, yeah. I don't need to go around to the front. You know, I can just, that's I can clever, just dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, can I ask what that blanket is? Uh, yeah, it's a 300 watt companion oh, blanket. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's quite a good one. We bought that. We well, we got that more so for the Prado because we didn't have any fixed solar on the roof of that, and yep. wanted to be able to charge that battery too. Gotcha. But I kind of just throw it in on every trip now. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, Skinny enough, aren't they? Yeah, they, they fold down real nice. Yeah. You know? And you know, you can't. You know, if you want to be off grid for a long time, you know, having an extra blanket in the car is going to help you stay out there for oh, more, isn't spot it? Spot on. You know, you and especially need... if you yeah. can park the car. Yeah. You know, if you can use that rooftop yeah. um, panel for driving. Yeah. And then park the car under shade. Yeah. And then have the blanket popping out to follow the sun. Yeah. That's a win-win, man. Yeah, you know, 100%, yeah. yeah. I think you need to keep yourself open to kind of things like that as well. Agreed. You know, Agreed. You, you, you know, everyone wants to kind of get in the shade out the sun, but then it yeah. comes with the cost of your panels and stuff too, right? So yeah, you need exactly. To be able to, you got a portable one. You can send it out in the sun. Oh, keep your perfect. car in the shade, that kind of stuff. So and being a 300 watt, that would pump. It does, yeah. So going back to what you were saying before, I think it does 10 or 11 amps. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, yeah in, right. in like perfect conditions. Yeah. So you know, you can charge your battery up real quick yeah. if you get a couple of couple of good hours in the day. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can top it right back up real quick, eh? Hey? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah.
guys, that probably about wraps it up. I think we've probably forgotten a few things. Always. Yep. <laughs> but oh, look, man, I want to I yeah. thank you, dude. Thank yeah. you so much, man, for, um, yeah, man, for doing this with me. Yeah. Now, guys, uh, for regular watches, Scotty's probably, well, I'm going to try and get him on a lot more trips. I, I want to get you on a heap more, man. He, yeah. He's great to have on a trip. Very positive guy. Always thinks of the best situation, but appreciate... I don't know if you guys, I hope you guys will appreciate, you know, his love for an old car like this and how he's tried to keep it, you know, in the family for one. And also, uh, you, you, you tried to keep it keep it for longevity, yeah, you know? Yeah, give it a new lease on life as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, just quickly, this is off the top of the cuff. Give me the three best things that you love about this car, man. Um, I love the fact that it's still in the family, right? So, so do I. You know, That's what I wanted to show, man. Yeah, yeah, so I suppose with that, you know, it's age and it's kind of vintage character. Yeah. Um, I love, I love the fact that it is, it is going back to the word agriculture. I love the fact that you have to drive it. The fact that you have to drive it's kind of, you know, it's really appreciated. Yeah. I think, you know. Um, and what else? I don't know, I suppose just the way that we've, the way that we've, we're operating out of it now, you know, yeah. with how we've kind of set it up. You know, I'm very comfortable with the, the way that the setup is now. I don't find myself yeah, kind of nitpicking it. it too much no. anymore. I'm kind of just like, yeah, you know, we've finally found a level where we can just turn the key and go. Yeah, create you memories, know. dude. Yeah, that's what it's so, all and that's, about. you know, that's ultimately where we wanted to get to with the setup, you know, yeah. we're there now. So, um, yeah, I like the fact that, you know, when we were talking about coming away this, you know, coming away this weekend and doing something, and, um, yeah, it's just a matter of throw the pillow in the car and, Put the key in now, and yeah, that's kind exactly. of where it's at. And I'll take it home and send it back in the shed, and it should be good to go for next time, you know. So yeah, because it seems like you've sort of spent money on the most important things on this mm. car. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The sleep setup. That's yeah. one of the most important yeah. things. Reliability. Yeah. You know, you're servicing it every five thousand k's. Yeah. Um, and I, I just the in, I don't know, guys. I need to keep mentioning it. the interior just gets me. Eh? Sometime this weekend, I want to just have a little bit of a drive of it. I'd love to, but yeah. Um, Keep an eye out too, guys, for the Everyman Chats podcast. I'm going to get this guy on. We'll have a really good yarn. Um, I'm sure there's so much I've got to learn about you, you know, about yeah. dad life. I want to know how you felt about all that and yeah. um, all the trips he's been on. And, you know, um, yeah. yeah, there's so much to talk about. But, Scotty, man, yeah. thank you so Jeez, much, no, dude. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. No, I appreciate it's you. Been a weekend. Yeah, it's Enjoy been it. too long. Yeah, it has, has been. been. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Cheers, Thank guys. you, Scotty. Follow Overland in Oz on um, Instagram. I'm trying to get him back on the YouTube because he's a very entertaining character. Guys, if you're liking this content, like, subscribe, all that Comment bullshit. Below. Yeah, I know, dude. It's annoying. Um, but if you are, you, you keep an eye out on that Everyman Chats. Loving it. Pumping out more content. See you in the next episode. There you go. Thank you, brother.